mission of the Texas State Board of Plumbing Examiners is to help protect the health and safety of the citizens of the state of Texas by ensuring that our drinking water, air, and medical gases are not contaminated and that we may live and work in the safe conditions that properly installed plumbing systems are designed to provide. The Texas State Board of Plumbing Examiners website is www.tsbpe.state.tx.us. If you have any questions regarding any plumbing issues as far as the licensing and regulations of the state of Texas, you can visit them. You can also do a license search. Anyone that comes to your home or business to engage in plumbing shall have and maintain a master's plumbing license. The master number should be on the side of the truck starting with an M number. You can go here and research to make sure that they have the proper insurances on file and also file a complaint if you need. Anyone that comes into your home has to have this license. This is including installing drains, cleaning drains, garbage disposals, water heaters, anything related to plumbing shall have a license. You can do the work yourself, but you still must follow the local and state codes and must obtain the proper permits. You can visit your local building department and find out what is required to obtain a permit. The first thing you should know before you work on any of your plumbing system is to know where to shut the water off. Out at the street, there'll be two lines for a sewer marked on the curb in most cities, and then one indicates where the water meter is located. Most cities do not want you to operate or get into this box. It is the city actually owns this box. There is a valve there that will shut off the whole water. If you need to, you can contact the city and they will come out and do that for you. There's a T in the ground coming off your water main if you have a sprinkler system that feeds over to a green box that looks similar to this. Most are located down by the curb. If you have a problem with your sprinkler system and it's leaking and you, you want to shut just the sprinkler system off, turn one of these valves. Sometimes these valves are rusted and you may have to use a wrench to turn them off. If you follow the line up to your house, there's a line buried under the ground that comes up into your flower bed, usually up near the house. Some of the newer homes, the valves are located inside in odd places. In this uh, box here, uh, which may be buried, um, you will see a, a shutoff valve and a regulator. If we were to dig one up and replace it, this is what we do. We raise it up, put it in a bigger box so that you can gain access to it. Some of the valves look like this. This is a gate valve on the left, and here's one that is broken. If you attempt to turn this gate valve off, there's a good chance that it will break. These valves were not meant to be put in the ground, but are still being used today. We install stainless steel ball valves. A valve underneath the sink. Um, if you're going to work on a faucet or a toilet, uh, you have a shutoff valve here. If the shutoff valve will not shut off, you may need to replace it. You want to check these first before you work on any of your plumbing system. This particular valve has been soldered on, so in order to change it, we will have to cut it off. So we've shut the water off um, at our shutoff valve and bled the system down. We have a bucket that we put underneath this valve as we cut it off with a pair of tubing cutters. That piece there was an escutcheon that we took off. And so now you can still see there's water coming out. So we put our new escutcheon on. What I usually do is put them on backwards first to spread out the, the tongs so that it will go on. We apply a pipe compound just to these threads only. There is a ferrule that's located inside here. This ferrule, when tightened down, is what seats against the copper and prevents and protects against leaks. So your valve is slided on all the way. You want to make sure it slides onto the copper all the way. If you don't have enough copper sticking out of the wall, then you may have to cut into the wall or call a professional. Installing the shutoff valve uh, is something that homeowners attempt but often do wrong. I highly recommend contacting a plumbing professional to install this. If that valve was to blow off, you would have a flood in your home. The hardest part in teaching someone how to install an angle stop, especially a compression one, is how tight to get it. If you over tighten it, you could break it. If you don't get it too tight or tight enough, then it will blow off. I usually tell most homeowners to get it as tight as you possibly can because unless you're doing this every day, you're probably not going to be able to break it. When you snug it down, the ferrule will actually bite into the copper and that's what stops water from coming out. So after your valve is installed, make sure you shut it off. This is a quarter turn valve. We recommend using brass craft quarter turn valves. Make sure your water sh uh, that's shut off and then you can turn the water on back to the house unless you have other openings in the piping. 
Now to undo a compression style valve, which is what is most common in the Frisco area, especially in your homes built after 2000, you shut the water off again, bleed the pressure off, and then you simply reverse your install procedure that we just saw. So you'll actually undo it. Sometimes these can be on there really tight. Keep a bucket underneath because there's going to be water. Once you get that uh, valve off, now you have, you're stuck with a nut that will not come off because there's a ferrule that has bitten into the copper and is staying put. A little trick that I do is if there is an escutcheon, I will actually break that escutcheon off. You can use a pair of 10 snips or you can actually uh, just use a pair of pliers and break it off, which is what I'm going to do. You want to be careful, this metal is very sharp. There are many types of angle stops and shutoff valves. Angle stop is another word for this type of valve. There are compression ones, soldered on ones, push on ones, plastic ones. There are many types. If you see the little copper sticking down from the top there, that was a copper supply line that they installed onto this valve. I recommend using a braided flex line. We do like the brand Brasscraft because we've had the best luck with them. Every plumber will have their own way of doing this. Now that you've removed that escutcheon, you can then slide the nut back and expose the brass ferrule. Safe T-Cut makes a, valve, a ring buster that will cut this ring off. Most homeowners are going to have access to that because most plumbing supply houses do not carry them. Home Depot or Lowe's does carry a compression ring puller, but you got to be careful if you use that because you could actually stretch the copper and then your new shutoff valve will not go on successfully. So with the nut pushback, you can see the brass ferrule there. What I do is I use a pair of pliers and I lightly press on the ferrule, just the brass ferrule alone, and work it off rotating it in a counterclockwise position. Most will come off fairly easy. Again, this is something that I would recommend having a professional do. Now with your nut off, you can see that it's plain copper. Here's one of the plastic ones. If you have this type of plastic one, you want to change it out before the house is 10 years old. The same with the uh, corrugated one here on the left. That particular valve is the number two leak and flood in Texas. Number one is water heaters leaking. So if you have one of these compression valves, if you're going to work on your faucet or your toilet, um, you want to change this out um, because this, these are a one-time use. If you move the metal that's going up to the faucet or the toilet, um, you've weakened it. And it's waiting for 2 a.m. to blow out or when you've gone out of town. We also don't like the plastic nut that goes up to some of the faucets on these. The plastic has been deteriorating and breaking. The toilet line with a plastic nut on a brass craft flex connector does appear to be holding up very well. Again, you work the ferrule off. And then you would go back with the previous step that we showed you on how to install the valve. Back with the escutcheon. And then notice that we only use a uh, pipe compound on those threads. The reason is that this is a, a thread that has, uh, it's called a running thread. Um, it's not designed to tighten down, it uses a ferrule um, to do that. So you only want to use pipe compound on 
your angle stop piece, you don't want to use pipe thread tape. Um, if you do use the tape, there's a chance that it could crack the nut and then you could have a flood. Again, the water would be off the entire time of this uh, work that we're doing here. Then tighten it back up with your compression. And the reason I use compression instead of solder on is I know that this valve is going to fail at some point. Um, on average, they're lasting about 10 years. Um, the brass craft seem to be lasting a little bit longer. Um, so we know we're going to have to replace it again. So we want to make sure that we are able to do that fairly easily. Okay, now shut your valve back off and then you'll turn your water on and test for leaks. I recommend leaving a bowl underneath any work that you've done um, for a while to make sure, you know, over a couple days. So now here's the copper flex line. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take that off because I don't like the copper going up to the uh, faucets. There's always a chance that uh, something is going to go wrong. Um, this particular style did have a good piece going into the faucet so it wouldn't leak but most of them don't have that. Uh, a lot of guys try to use a cone washer um, just on a straight piece of copper and there's a good chance that that's going to leak. I like to have a fitting that has, the, the, the flex line has a fitting that is made specifically for this. So you'll undo this and then um, once you get that done, uh, there may be a washer that is stuck up in the faucet. You gotta pull that out. And then to go, to go back with a flex connector, you simply apply a little bit of pipe compound to the threads, not a lot, just something to seal against the washer. Don't want to use pipe tape there because again, this is a running thread. The flex connector has a washer in it and that is what's going to seal it, not the thread tape. There we go with our flex connector. Now this is half inch iron pipe. What we recommend for angle stops um, for your faucets and toilets are a 5 8 by 3 8 compression angle stop. Um, and then for the flex connector for a faucet, you're going to be using a 3 8 compression by half inch FIP or female iron pipe fitting to go up to your faucet. So attach that on your ceiling against a washer so you don't have to get super tight, not as tight as you got the uh, ferrule portion over there, but you want to get it snug. Um, you do not want that nut to be able to vibrate off or you'll have a flood. So now we take the, we take the um, uh, compression nut and ferrule off because on this we don't, we're not going to use that. Our flex connector has an end that's pre-made on there uh, that is 3 8 in compression and it has a washer in it. So we'll tighten this down, uh, get it snug on there finger tight, and then you want to tighten it. And you can break these, but you want to go uh, uh, fairly snug. Use your wrench. You want to make sure that it's sealing against that rubber washer. There's a point where they, you feel them stop and that's where I'd like to go with them. Now that you've got that on, you can turn your water back on and check for leaks. Now that you've got a good shutoff valve installed, you can shut that off and work on your toilet or work on your uh, valve. Same thing on a toilet valve here. So we're going to test for leaks. Uh, a big leak that happens is toilet flappers leaking. Uh, people don't realize it, but your toilet could be leaking, causing your water bill and you're wasting a lot of water. So what we do is we put a dye in the back. You can use blue food coloring is what we recommend, or you can pick up a, a tablet at your local uh, public works department. Put a dye in the back of the tank um, and let it set for three minutes. If you see water end up in the bowl, um, uh, down in the bowl portion, then you have a leak somewhere. This toilet held fine, but this is what the uh, water would look like if there was a leak. So some of the things that can cause leaks in toilets are flappers, um, and then there's a fill valve where this is what puts the water in to the uh, tank and also helps create the swirling motion for the bowl. So this is an overflow tube. 
Most of them are round, white plastic, uh, some of them are black. This is the fill valve. If the fill valve gets um, is messing up, you will see water going down into the overflow. And that can cause a leak, that can happen and waste a lot of water. So what we're going to do, these are types of flappers. There are a bunch of flappers. Uh, a lot of the newer toilets, now that they're 1.28, have three inch flappers that are specifically designed for that particular toilet. It may become difficult to find parts for toilets in the near future. So we're going to go through a complete toilet rebuild on your average toilet here in Texas. So you've shut your, you've made sure you've got a good shutoff valve. We've done that. And now you're going to disconnect your fill valve. So you'll undo your supply line. And notice the plastic nut here. I have not had problems with the plastic nuts on the Brasscraft brand. I have on others. So your fill valve is attached with a retaining nut. So you undo this. And this can be tough. Sometimes if the toilet's older, these nuts will actually, uh, kind of break off on the ends. It's very difficult to get them. Uh, you're usually working up next to a cabinet. So once you get that nut off, you can then pull your fill valve out, but you want to have a bucket underneath that because there's going to be water um, coming out of the tank. You want to make sure you flush and get as much out as you can. So you'll undo the nuts on the bottom. I use a half inch in wrench. I undo the nut on the right first when I'm looking at the toilet so I can tilt the tank and get the water out. Set your tank up on your toilet, and you want to be careful because this is all breakable. Porcelain is very sharp. So now we're going to start the process of undoing that. First, we pull our, our bolts out. Now, due to the chlorine in the water, these rubber pieces and the chlorine are going to be very blackish. You're going to get your fingers pretty black. So you'll undo that. Now, notice there's no washer in between there. It's just a rubber washer going up to the bolt. Some of the instructions in kits say to put a washer there. Don't do it. It will leak. So that was your flush valve gasket. You'll pull it off. It's going to be nasty. And then this is your flush valve nut. Now, you may have to use a giant pair of channel locks or pliers. You may not have a pair big enough to get this nut off. Um, it spins off this way, and then you can remove your flush valve. Your flush valve is also attached to the flapper, which is attached to the handle. So now you'll have to undo your handle or your flapper from the handle. Now your tank is completely empty. Use a rag and clean up any debris that may be blocking um, uh, where you're going to reseal against. It's a good idea to have that dry. So now we're going to install the new flush valve. First thing we do is we set our flush valve in there so we can get our measurement. We want to make sure that the overflow tube is not above the handle. If it is and your fill valve malfunctions, then you'll have water coming out the handle and onto your floor. So we marked this one. We want to be about an inch below the handle um, is where I like to put them. So we're going to use a hacksaw or a saw and cut that off. Then I use silicone to go around this gasket. This is not in most of the instructions. The reason I do it is the newest porcelain that we're getting is flaking earlier than before. So I'll put any uh, where rubber is going to go against porcelain, I will put silicone on there. So then you put this in there and you want to angle it so that you're not blocking your tank to bowl holes, tank to bolt uh, holes there. Position it at an angle. You can see I still have access to all three of the holes. And then you'll tighten this. Now this is plastic on plastic. You can strip this out. You can break this very easily. You want to get it snug so that it doesn't move. Now here's a typical tank to bowl gasket. So I'm going to take a bolt and I'm going to slide a washer over that. A rubber washer, not a brass one. A lot of these kits come with a lot of different pieces in there. Put a little bit of silicone around that. insert it back into our tank. Silicone is very sticky. Um, so you'll put your bolts uh, into your tank. The silicone will actually help hold them in there as well. There you go. And now we need a rubber washer. Um, the rubber washer for the fill valve actually comes with a cone washer like I was talking to you about earlier for faucets or toilets. You want to disregard this plastic nut if you're going to use a supply line. Um, like Brasscraft has one pre-made. Now your washer, a lot of people don't realize, but this is actually two washers, a cone washer inside our fill valve gasket. So you have to pop that out or you can use a, you can use a, a knife to cut it out, but you want to be careful not to cut yourself or the, or the rubber and damage it. So you'll disregard this cone washer, we don't need that. What you need is the flat fill valve gasket. You want to put the fill valve gasket onto your fill valve so that it is pointing down. You want to make a good seal. And then I'll put silicone around this gasket.
and saw it back into our hole, and that silicone fills in any of the cracks and little gaps that are in porcelain, then you want to use your retaining nut to go into the bottom. Again, plastic on plastic, you can break this nut very easily. Manufacturer recommends hand tightening and then going one quarter to one half turn. I can do that by hand because I've done a lot of these, um, but I recommend putting a pair of pliers on just snugging it just a little bit. You don't want to break it. So now we got to put our tank to bowl gasket on. This just slides on. It's it's a uh, uh, every toilet's a little bit different. Uh, this is the most common toilet, um, and then you would apply silicone to this piece here. If you have a Kohler toilet, um, you don't want to put silicone on here. You want to use Kohler's gaskets. Now you're going to just use one nut um, and one washer on each side of this toilet. Some brands like Gerber require you to install the nut and washer in between the tank. Most toilets don't have the room to do that. That's why I'm showing this is the most common one. So you'll put your washer on and then your nut and snug it up. Uh, you want to leave it a little bit loose because you don't want to break the toilet and you've got to tighten one side first and rotate back and forth in a sequence. Okay, I use a half inch uh, or quarter inch uh, drive with a half inch socket, deep socket. And what you do is you want to tighten one side at a time. The goal is to get the porcelain to meet against or the tank to meet against the bowl without moving, but not too tight. You can crack these very easily. So you'll do one side and then the other side, one side and then the other side, just a little bit at a time until you get it down. And you want to look at the back of the toilet tank to see if it's seating up right and if it's level. Apply a little bit of pipe compound to your plastic threads here. Now some pipe compounds are not compatible with plastics. A lot of guys don't know that. A lot of people don't know that. So we're going to make sure that this is that your pipe compound is rated for that. Install your flex connector. Um, and that has a washer in it, so we're not going to use any Teflon tape on the um, on the fill valve there. And you want to get that pretty snug. Um, uh, you don't want to over tighten it because it is plastic on plastic. And then you'll put your three eighths down to your uh, shutoff valve. Okay, so now we've got our tank back on, so and we can see that our overflow is below the handle opening. So we're going to use our fill valve tube. Now this tube goes onto the fill valve and there's a little clip with the kits that we use um, that, that will fit onto there. Um, you don't want to just stick the tube down into the, um, the fill valve. There are some brands that have that option. It's not a good idea to use that because it can actually siphon the water out of the tank um, and you'll have the toilet running. So now there's an adjustment on this uh, fill valve and you want to make sure that that water will go down inside the overflow tube. So this is a locking nut. Uh, this particular fill valve that we like, uh, made by Fluidmaster. You want to set it, I set them usually typically to the top of the tank. Make sure you, once you get it set, you want to lock that nut in there. Now there's another finite adjustment, there's a little Phillips screw that you can you can do there. You can, also, if you need to replace the handle, um, these are different. It's not righty tighty lefty loosey on, on toilet handles. It is the opposite of that. So you want to turn it, um, the opposite way to tighten it. Install your new handle. And again, this will be uh, lefty tighty righty loosey on this on this one here. And then just snug it up a little bit. You want to make sure the handle is, is nice and tight. Uh, again, plastic on plastic, you want to be careful. Install your flapper. Uh, it's got a little clip, a little chain. The flapper fits onto the ears of the flush valve. Most of them do this, they slap, they um, pop on. And then you want to adjust your chain. I try to leave one to two links of slack on the handle or on the chain because if you leave too much then the chain can get stuck underneath the the flapper and cause a leak. So once you got that set and you see you've got one to two links you want to clip the access chain off. Um, you don't want to leave that chain hanging because it can also get underneath the flapper when somebody flushes the toilet and it will cause the toilet to run. Now there is an adjustment on this particular flapper. Um, it's got a adjustment going up and down. We've actually started using a different flapper made by Corky um, for most of our toilets here. But you want to set that level. You don't want the toilet to double flush. You want it to have a good solid flush and then once. 
Here's an old style uh, fill valve that has a, uh, a ball on the end of it. I don't like these, they've had a lot of issues. Okay, bathroom faucet repair. So we're going to assume that you've got good shutoff valves underneath here, but you've got a faucet that's dripping. You're wasting a lot of water. That's dripping 24 hours, seven days a week, um, every day. So mowing is the most common here, and the handle comes off by unscrewing it, uh, the bonnet portion there. If the handle's loose, you can also tighten it. There's a Phillips screw up inside there. You can tighten that handle. Okay, now that you've got your handle off, um, we want to uh, remove the retaining nut that is holding the cartridge in place. Um, this cartridge, uh, many faucets, uh, there's many, many, many faucets out there, and they all come apart differently. Uh, Moen is one of the most common brands. Delta is a common brand around here, so um, they come apart very similar to this way. Uh, close your drain so you don't lose any parts down there. That's that's a bummer when that happens. And then you'll pull your cartridge out. Now some of these can be difficult to get out. Um, there are faucet cartridge pullers. I very rarely have had one that fits with the faucet I'm working on. Um, so you can work it out with a pair of pliers. So once you get this cartridge out, um, and it can be pretty tough to get out. Sometimes they break off in there and it's a, it's a big mess. Um, as long as you've got the water shut off, then there you go. So now your cartridge come out. You can inspect it and uh, kind of see, um, you know, the O-rings are going. And what I do is I'll, I'll put my finger down in here to make sure that there's nothing that is um, uh, like a piece of solder or anything that could be cutting the O-ring. So you install your new one. They usually come with a, a lube. Um, in the there, you can use a faucet grease um, to put on there. Um, so now there's a little ear that that fits down into. You want to make sure it fits into there. You might have to rotate the cartridge a little bit to get it to fit down properly. And then you install your uh, retaining nut to lock in the, the cartridge. You don't have to get super tight on this. It's just holding the uh, cartridge in place. The O-rings is what seals the water. This just prevents it from popping up. Um, so you don't want to get it super tight because again, it's thin, it's thin brass. It could break and you're going up against plastic. Okay. So now before you put the handle on, you want to check and make sure that you've got the cartridge installed correctly and that it's not leaking. I use a little bit of toilet paper usually to wipe up the water because toilet paper absorbs very well. Turn your valve underneath your sink and then you can use your handle to operate, um, Kind of stick it on there and make sure you've got it going in the right direction and it's uh, going to work right. Once you check for leaks, make sure nothing's leaking. Then you can install your handle back on uh, the bonnet. Here's an aerator. I know a lot of the cities offer 1.5 uh, GPM aerators. So to undo an aerator, you might have to use a pair of pliers to get it on if you can't undo it by hand. When you pull this off, um, there's a rubber washer in there and there's going to be some debris in there. You can clean the debris out of your existing one if you want to reuse it. So the washer sometimes gets stuck up inside the faucet. You want to pull that out because you're going to need it to put it back together. You can install your new aerator um, uh, from the city and that will reduce the amount of water that you use. The threads go back up in there and it is righty tidy on these and after you get it all together um, you can do that. You can also use a piece of rubber um, to sometimes help you get the old ones out. Well, there we go. So now we're going to install our handle back on and we're going to uh, righty tidy that back on. You don't want to get that super snug because you may have to take it off again in the future if you have a leak. I would say hand tight's perfect. Okay, kitchen faucets. Again, this is a Moen brand. This is one of their newest cartridges. We're going to show you how to work on it. Their old ones come apart very similar, just a different style of cartridge. So the handle is held on with an Allen screw. Usually somewhere on the handle you'll see a little rubber uh, plug hole cover, um, or sometimes it's the brand name, it'll say Moen on it or Delta or whatever. So you want to use an Allen wrench and a pair of pliers. So you get the Allen wrench and you stick it into the uh, opening inside there and there's many different sizes and you'll undo this uh, handle. It's just a little set screw that holds the handle on. A little side note, the uh, more expensive the faucet, the harder it is to work on. And the more pricey the parts will be if it does break. 
So these bonnets, some of them just snap on, some of them screw on. Um, and then once you get that off, now you're, you've exposed your retaining nut that holds the cartridge in place. Again, we've shut the water off already. We had good shut off valve, so we're ready to go. You'll undo your retaining nut. And then this is the newest cartridge. It only goes in one way, which I really like. Um, I want to make sure there's no debris or any solder or any dirt or anything that's going to uh, not allow the new cartridge to seal properly. Then you want to install the cartridge. Make sure it goes. It only goes in one way. Install your retaining nut. A little side note: if you're the original homeowner from Moen, you can also have a life. You have a lifetime warranty on your faucet. If you have a problem with it, they will send you parts uh, to replace it or, or replace it if it needs to be. Install your new uh, cartridge and make sure it's tight and you want to turn your water back on and you can manually operate the, the controller to make sure that nothing is leaking. And then it's just simply reverse the procedure. Install your, your bonnet cover back on and then install your handle. And then install your Allen screw. These Allen screws can be a little tricky when you're working with them. You might want to clog, uh, plug your drain um, or put a, wa uh, a rag down in the drain so that in case that falls down into the sink, you're not having to fish it out. And you want to get that fairly snug because you don't want the handle to, to rock back and forth when you're done. Okay, leaky shower repair. We get this call a lot. This is a mowing shower. Sometimes they don't produce hot water or sometimes they produce uh, no cold water or you're getting low flow. I used to recommend that homeowners uh, try these, um, and I, I quit doing that because there's so many variables that come into play that it is difficult to do. Um, but if you want to know how to do it, I'm going to show you. So there's an Allen screw in the bottom of the handle on most of these. Sometimes there's a, a Phillips screw behind a little cover on the front. So you'll pull the Allen screw out or the or the screw, pull your handle off, and now you've exposed the the uh, handle adapter. It's held on with a Phillips screwdriver. Uh, lefty loosey on this and you'll undo the um, handle adapter pull the handle adapter out and now you can see the white piece there that is a uh, limiting device that you can actually limit how much hot water these get so you want to pull your limiting device and the limiting lock out which are just plastic pieces that slide right out And now you want to pull your barrel out. The barrel is what holds all that, um, holds all those pieces together, the handle adapter, and it's a stop. Um, now this, the Moen is held on with two Phillips screws. Um, I use a drill, but I don't recommend it because you can strip these screws out um, unless you've done several thousand of them. You want to be careful. So I would use a Phillips screwdriver. Pull the screws out. And then I switch to a flathead screw, and right at the bottom of this, there's a little opening that you can actually break the seal on these. Um, a lot of these are caulked in. We recommend caulking them in. Okay, so now, sometimes the tile guy has really screwed us up here, and he's put the tile so close that you have to chip it out to get to the retaining uh, clip. The little clip is a U-shaped clip that holds these in. You can use a pair of needle nose or pliers to, to pull that out. Just pull straight up. Again, you want to make sure the water's off before you get to this procedure because um, when you pull that retaining uh, clip out, you're going to have to pull the cartridge out. This is a Moen puller. I recommend, you know, if you're going to do it, buy one of those. Or the cartridge comes with a little plastic piece in there. You slide it on and then rotate the cartridge and it'll help it come out. Now, these are very difficult to get out in a lot of cases. Um, I make it look simple because I've done several, several, several thousand of them. Um, once you pull them out, um, that's your cartridge. Now, a lot of people hate mowing because of this shower cartridge. It's not really mowing's fault. It's actually the hard water and debris that gets in our water. Every single brand has the same kind of issues. Um, it's just people are mostly familiar with the mowing. Now I use a little bit of emery cloth in here. I put my finger up in there and I could feel a little rough spot. So what I want to do is clean that off because I don't want that rubber to seal against a rough spot and leak. Clean that out, kind of make sure that there's that it feels smooth, and then there's a little bit of lube in the um, in the faucets. Now, on the other cartridge, you might not be able to see it there, but it says HC. That stands for hot and cold. 
Hot is usually on the left in most houses. Sometimes plumbers get that backwards. But then you install the uh, piece, that little white piece that comes with the cartridge, helps you to shove it back in there and rotate it and get it in there. This could be tough. You want to get it all the way back in there because you've got to put your retaining clip on. Find your U-shaped retaining clip and install it down and lock it in. Now, sometimes people have a hard time here because getting that clip in can be a little tricky. You might have to rotate the cartridge uh, to get it in, or you might have to kind of push it in a little farther. And then after your retaining clip's in, install your barrel. So now at this point, um, mowing cartridges come in the on position. Um, I rotate them 180 degrees so that when I turn the water on, um, I don't have water going everywhere. Um, and so you put your you scratch them back on. Or your scratching plate held on with two Phillips screws. It's also a good idea if you're not confident in your work to turn the water back on before you start putting it all back together uh, to make sure that nothing's leaking in the wall. But once you get that back on, uh, get your scutcheon plate back on with two screws. Um, now we can start installing our uh, our adapter that holds our limit. This is our hot water limit. Again, you can set that if you've got small children and you're concerned about them getting scalded or actually the elderly get burned most oftenly. So you can limit those. Then install your handle adapter. And now we've, you know, we've got it in the off position. There's no water coming out through the spout so we know we've got it in the right direction. And then you want to install the Phillips screw that holds the handle adapter on. And the screw screws into the end of the cartridge. You want to get it snug. Um, you don't want to get it super tight. You can break it, but you don't want it to wiggle either. So now we've got our um, we've got that on. We've got our Allen Allen screw that we're going to put back into our handle. So now the the Allen screw goes in the bottom, and a lot of times the tub spouts in in a position where you can't get to that. So you want to turn the handle out too. You be prepared. You got all your tools out of the bathtub, and that you're not sitting in the tub because you're going to get wet um, if you got the water on, which you should have the water on back on at this point. So install, install your Allen screw and then tighten it up. And you don't want to get it super tight because you can strip it out, but you want to get it tight enough that it's not a loose handle. Okay, there we go. And now the final step is to put a little bit of caulking around the escutcheon plate because you want it to seal good and tight against the wall. Um, I use clear uh, DAP is what I use. Um, you can get that at Home Depot or Lowe's or really any hardware store. It's water soluble. Um, I don't recommend using silicone on this because it's very difficult to get silicone to, to go into the groove and, and seal up well. And then also it's very sticky. Um, you can't wipe it away. Okay, replacing a shower head. So the city of Frisco actually has in the public utility department, they offer um, replacement shower heads that you can go down from a two gallon, I believe it's to a 1.5 gallon. Some of these newer heads actually spray very hard. They feel a lot like a two gallon or a three gallon shower head. It's really neat. Okay, so some of the faucets have a flat spot that you can use a crescent wrench on. Um, and you can undo those. Um, again, lefty loosey, righty tidy. So we're going to take it off. So lefty loosey. Once you get that undone, there's going to be some thread tape on there that you'll have to remove. Take the thread tape off. Okay, now sometimes the shower arm has to be removed to install a new head. Um, maybe it just looks ugly or maybe you've had a leak in it. Um, now the fitting is in the wall, so you gotta be careful you don't wanna break that. But you see, I use a pair of pliers to get that out because I don't wanna put marks on the, um, on the, uh, uh, piping. I'll do the same when I go to install it. So you want to take that out, you want to clean off your uh, pipe compound and on your new one you want to use thread tape. Um, now this is a this is a gray area with a lot of plumbers. The reason I use thread tape and pipe compound both on these is that I don't want any leaks and I have less leaks doing that. So I'll use thread tape and then I'll put a little bit of pipe compound on the outside of the tape and then screw that back in righty tidy. It's hard to get in there sometimes because they're uh, uh, the pipe is back in the wall. Once you get it in there and get it started, 
go around a few times, and then you want to use your the end of your pliers, uh, put it in the in the opening there, and rotate it around. I mean, you want to you want to get this pretty snug. You don't want the shower head. To, somebody goes to move the shower head. You don't want them to be able to move the piping um, around. Get it pointed down. You can break these. You can break the fitting in the wall, so you want to be careful. So once you get that on there, go ahead and take the uh, thread tape and put it on the outside of these threads. You rotate it in the clockwise position because when you go to screw the shower head on, and I use a little bit of pipe compound there, you go to screw the shower head on, you want it to tighten onto the tape. If you had it put on the other way, then it would undo the tape as you were screwing it on and you could ha actually have a leak. Uh, then install your shower head, um, and now this one does not have a square spot on it, so you might have to use a pair of pliers just lightly to grip it. Um, if you grip it too tight, you could actually damage the plastic on the head. So I was, I was actually pretty impressed with this shower head. This is a 1.5 gallon shower head. Um, I felt like it put out just as much pressure as a 2 gallon shower head. Uh, the thing that was lacking a little bit was the volume, but again, we're, we're out to save water. This concludes our video and I appreciate you listening to my ramblings and if you have any questions you can contact me at 972-377-4114. Plumbing by Jay. Thank you.